Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. It's Saturday morning, it's probably about half past eight and I tell you what, we have got one hell of a frost down here this morning. It's feeling a lot more like winter and it doesn't feel like spring is only round the corner. But having a look round on the plot, there are definitely plenty of signs. So we have got a lot more tulips now showing their foliage and we've even got a couple of daffodils showing their bright yellow faces already. Now I have gone and had a little look in the ponds because towards the end of February, beginning of March that is when we normally get our frog spawn but we don't seem to have any just yet but I did notice a little bit of movement in the pond so fingers crossed the frogs are already in there and it won't be long before they start to mate and spawn that frog spawn. I'm sure there's loads of other little signs around the plot that I haven't seen yet. So as we do go around, I will keep you up to date with all the little signs of spring because it is rather exciting this time of year. Now, given that it's really quite cold, but also it's the last weekend that we're able to burn anything down here on the plot. Now we can only have fires from November to February. So it's the last weekend of February. So we're gonna build a little fire in a moment. We've got lots of woody material that we need to burn. I've got some of the wood from the shed repair that we done. So I wanna try and get rid of that and also warm ourselves up so I'll go and make a little coffee in a minute and then we'll warm up by the fire now I did just want to apologize because I haven't been around for a couple of weeks now there has been a couple of reasons so first of all the weather has just been really really bad we've had loads of rainstorms and it's just been a little bit too soggy to get down here and film so I haven't been down here for a good couple of weeks now and then last weekend I had one hell of a cold and I was feeling a little bit sorry for myself so I came down with it on the Wednesday I think uh, Thursday Friday I was at work not feeling great and then Saturday Sunday I think I spent most of it in bed so yes I'm feeling a lot better now I think last Saturday it was actually quite a lovely day so I was quite sad that I wasn't able to get down here but I'm down here today and I'll tell you what we have got loads of jobs to get done down here on the plot ready for spring so we've got that big raised bed that we made just a couple of weeks ago using some of the cladding that was left over from the shed repair so I do want to try and fill that up with some of the rotted bark chip and then we'll fill the rest up with some of the homemade compost and then the plan is to have lots of summer flowering plants in there for the pollinators underneath that pear tree and then the poly house that also needs a good old tidy up because we haven't really used that over the winter months so I have brought some compost to fill up the two beds as well and then I want to sow some of my onions in there and also get some of the onion sets out because they seem to have disappeared this year and I don't know where they have gone so we have got so many jobs that I really must get done down here today now fingers crossed the weather's meant to be quite nice tomorrow as well so hopefully we will be able to get two full days down here on the plot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the fire up I'm going to go and make a nice cup of coffee and then we can start cracking on with some of these jobs so come on guys Okay, so I think we're gonna start in the poly house because it's a little bit warmer in here than it is out there at the moment, but that sun is beautiful today. So excuse the squintiness whilst we're in the poly house, but up here on the bench, we have got all sorts. We've got a few seedlings, but I mean, these didn't do too well at all. They did to begin with, they all came up, but they have started to die off in some of the frost. So we're gonna get rid of these, top this up with some fresh compost and we'll sow some seeds a little bit later. But then the cuttings and everything on top, they're doing brilliantly. I will take 
take you through. I mean, I think this strawberry is gone, so we will just have a sort out to make sure everything that's left on the bench is living. I mean, the bench itself we made back in the summertime, so I think July, August. So there is a video on how I built this, and the great thing about it is that it does fold away. So come summertime, I can still grow all my tomatoes, my cucumbers, and bits and pieces like that. But whilst we're in here, I do want to give the beds a bit of a sort out. We've got pots, um, which means slugs and snails are probably hiding in here. And also we've got a few weeds that we need to get rid of as well. I have also brought a couple of uh, bags of compost. So we will pop them in both these beds and then we can think about what we're gonna sow in here just before we start thinking about the tomatoes and the cucumbers and stuff. But yeah, we really must give this a bit of a sort out. Now I probably should have made this a little bit taller because I keep bumping my head on these battens, but hey ho, the build's already done. So come on, let's give this a good old sort out and then we can start sowing some seeds. have it guys everything's looking a little bit neater and tidier in here so we've emptied a couple of bags of compost on each side and then just at the back here I had a couple of pots left over which had loads of soil in so it seemed a bit of a waste to just chuck that on the compost heap and I'm trying to improve the soil structure in here now because the poly house is only a couple of years old it's only really had bagged compost in here and underneath here it's quite compact so yes I'm just trying to improve the soil structure and I have seen quite a few worms down on this side which is a good indication that your soil's doing really well so I'm quite happy with how it's going down in these beds at the moment and then up on the bench I've only had to really throw away a strawberry and I think one other plant so yes everything on here is doing really well but now we have got all of these empty seed trays so I think the next job is to go and get a bag of compost and go and raid the seed tray and see what we can sow so these are the seeds that we're going for today. We have gone for three types of brassicas and we're also going to try some onions again. So I definitely want some brassicas because I really did miss them on my Christmas dinner last year. So we've gone for some Brussels sprouts, Igor. We've gone for a cabbage, cabisse, and we've gone for some tender stem broccoli. Now the great thing about these is that if they do bolt a little bit early, you just get a really early crop and they're absolutely beautiful. And then finally, we have got some onions here. So we did try growing them September October last year but they just don't seem to have done well at all so I'm going to re-sow some of these and hopefully we'll get some onions out of them. Now I normally just sow them via sets so it's the first year that we're going to try from seed because the last few years I haven't had great onion harvest so fingers crossed this year so let's get these sown in some of this multi-purpose compost. seeds and you'll find that all brassica seeds look exactly the same so this is sprouts broccoli cabbage even radishes are part of the same family now these don't need to bury be buried too deep just a tiny little sprinkling of compost on top afterwards but you really don't get many seeds per seed packet 
and then these are the cabbage seeds which are almost identical. Now I believe that cabbages, sprouts or brassicas are exactly the same plant but the only thing is is that they've all been bred differently over the years so it's quite weird to think that yeah they all share exactly the same DNA but they're just being produced in different ways to create all different shapes and styles of the plant from where it's been spread across the world so a little bit of genetic modification over the years. So we'll just give this a very light sprinkle on top with some of the um, compost that I've already been through so I've removed some of those chunky bits. The last thing you want is a big bit of bark to be laying on top of all your little seeds because they'll never germinate under there. So we're just going to cover these all up just ever so slightly with a little bit of soil and then we'll give them a nice watering in pop them into the poly house where they should be nice and warm and that should speed up the germination a little bit. I'm glad we've been able to sort that poly house out. It was looking a little bit of a state in there and there were loads of slugs and snails. So I've got rid of those and hopefully we can start using it a little bit more. And also we've managed to get some of those seeds sown. So they're the first of 2024, which is quite exciting. And then I do want to sow some more tomorrow. I've got plenty of flowers that need sowing, but I am going to leave that until tomorrow. Now I have lost a couple of hours down here playing around with my new little bit of kit. So if you haven't realized, I've got this new microphone down here. So hopefully with this, you should should get some better footage because I do get it does get quite windy down here on the plot and some days it is a struggle to try and film for you guys so with this new bit of kit you should be able to hear me from this spot but you should also be able to hear me from all the way back here so hopefully we'll be getting a little bit better footage for you guys because it does get rather windy down here on the plot and it does make filming a little bit of a struggle sometimes so it's called newer it's a hundred pounds which seemed quite a bit but i mean some of them can get to 350 400 pounds so i thought it was a bit of a bargain so we'll see how we get on with this one so now we need to find the next job so come on so I was just having a little hunt through the big old seed box and I noticed that some of these potatoes are starting to sprout already. So we need to get them out and chip them properly. So we've got some Charlottes, we've got Pentlandell, International Kidney, which is also known as a Jersey Royal, but it has to be grown on the aisle. And then we've also got Caledonian Pearl. So yes, I really must start chitting these potatoes. So down here, I've just got some containers and this is where we're gonna start chitting our potatoes. So all chitting means, these have already started to sprout, is basically allowing these eyes to form sprouts on them and then they will start to form some sort of leafy type shoots on there but that is when they're ready to definitely be planted out. Now these guys have been left at the bottom of a box so you don't really want these white spindly ones but these ones on the other side these should be okay. Now you want to leave anything from two to maybe five sprouts on them depending on how big your potatoes are and you just want to leave them in a nice sunny spot but not too warm otherwise they might rot off. So I'm just going to put one variety per box and we're going to leave these inside the shed where it gets a little bit of light, not too much direct and it doesn't get too hot in there this time of year and they should be absolutely fine. And then hopefully in the next sort of three, maybe four weeks, we'll be planting these little guys out. It won't be long guys, just look at the tulip bed. We've got so many more showing their foliage now and we've got so many in here. So hopefully this little box bed is gonna be popping full of color.
And then in the second bed, we have got the alliums. Again, we've got a lot more in here than what we had just two weeks ago. And this should be full of lots of purples, blues and whites. So I'm just nestled down between the gooseberries and the raspberries, both of which are a little bit prickly down here. But we've got some autumn fruit in raspberry out, canes. That just whipped me right in the face. Uh, down here and I need to cut them back because they're already starting to sprout all their new lovely green foliage and what we want them to do is start putting that energy into the root ball so that they produce even more canes next year so some people do cut them down and just leave about six inches down at the bottom but I prefer to cut them all the way right down to the bottom so yeah we're going to cut these all back before they all start sprouting at the top. Now, if you're not 100% sure on what fruit canes you've got, whether that's autumn or summer fruiting, I would still cut them all the way down to the ground anyway. Because regardless, you're going to get lots of canes next year. And it might just be, if they are summer fruiting, they might just be a little bit later than if you had left them. Now, if you have got loads of new canes that are really quite tall poking through, you don't want to be cutting those back because that is this year's growth. But these are quite dark brown canes rather than a nice green colour. So you will be able to tell the difference between a woody old cane and a nice new cane. it won't be too long before the frogs start spawning in here and I have already seen a little bit of movement I do want to try and remove some of the blanket weed and algae that is growing in here now I don't want to remove it all because that will be some food for some of the tadpoles when they do hatch but there's quite a bit in there so I want to get in there and just give it a little bit of a tidy up So that is all we've got time for today, folks. I feel like we've got quite a few little jobs done down here on the plot. Now I'm planning to come back down here tomorrow because I think we've got another lovely day ahead of us and I've got plenty of more jobs that I really must get done. I was having a little look around. I want to plant out some of the onions. I've got some more seeds that I need to sow and I've also got the wildlife area and the decorative flower area that could do with a real good weed and a bit of a tidy up so that some of those spring flowers have got plenty of room to start to grow. I really must try and fill both of those raised beds as well because I do want to plant some bits out for the spring and the summertime just so that we've got more flowers for the pollinators. But tomorrow I should have a few more hours to myself because I'm not going to be prattling around with this microphone because I think I now know how to get it working. So hopefully the audio in this has been better than what it normally is. It hasn't been too windy down here. So for once, I'm actually hoping for a windy day just so that we can test it out. I also treated myself to a little gimbal. Now I thought it would have just been like a handheld tripod, but it's actually electronic and it's a little bit techy. So I need to have a little play around with that but that should help, especially with some of the plot tours, just making some of the videos a little bit smoother and I do shake a little bit. So hopefully that will steady the camera and just make the footage a little bit better for you guys. So yes, with the microphone and the gimbal, fingers crossed we should have some better videos. So I'll be back down here tomorrow with another adventure down on the plot. But in the meantime, guys, take care and I'll see you all very soon. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you here tomorrow. See you later, guys. Bye bye.